and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Monday Morning Golf Wrap with George Honeycutt and, of course, Hugh Roy III from the South Carolina Golf Center. We're so happy to have you join us today. And, of course, all this is brought to you by the wonderful people at the Myrtle Beach Golf Authority. And right now, it is peak season in the Grand Strand. All the golf courses are blooming. They're, they're growing like crazy, Hugh, and the Bermuda grasses are popping up. Uh, they're now worried about having to get out there enough with enough gas in each of the mowers to keep everything cut. So uh, It's almost uh, like they can't keep up, George. Yeah, so it's an exciting time down here. All the golf courses, they're filling up quick, but more importantly is, is the lodging is filling up. So if you're looking to come down here to the Grand Strand, looking to, to come down for a week of golf or a week of vacation or just a few days to enjoy the ocean and the other amenities that are here, contact the Myrtle Beach Golf Authority people. People, they'll get you in. They've got over 300, 300 different urinal units. They've got 100 golf courses to choose from, so they'll find the suit or the package that's best suited for you. So you can contact Kathy Ziegler, the golf director, or her assistant golf director, Karen Gilman, 888-272-7263. And, of course, you can reach them on the Internet at Myrtle Beach Golf.com. That's Myrtle-BeachGolf.com. Hugh, how was your weekend, buddy? Buddy, it was pretty hectic. Uh, you know, Saturday, I started at 7.30 in the morning. I think I got home about 6.45. Well, that's your that's your common Saturday, dude. Yep. It's just everybody coming from, you know, they got the Lexington Mafia coming from Lexington, South Carolina. and then The Lexington Mafia. Here. And uh, we had a good time. It was a good day. And then yesterday, you know, I got a chance to, like we were talking about just a few minutes ago, I'm still trying to get all the dirt out of my fingernails from working in the yard. I'm not used to seeing you with dirty hands, so. Well, you know, got to do what you got to do. I hear you. I hear you. Well, I tell you, I had an interesting weekend. I was in Atlanta, of course, for the last week and a half or so. And uh, again, we didn't get to broadcast last week, but it was uh, kind of refreshing to take a week off. But then again, too, our producer and uh, wonderful owner of the network here, Jeff, he's uh, he's basically giving us carte blanche today. He said, just record whatever you want. So he needs the content. So this could get, this could get ugly, <laughs> This folks. could get ugly. <laughs> but uh, I played, um, of course, uh, saw a bunch of people that I haven't seen. Dave and, and Kay Lynn Lease, I ran into, interestingly, I pulled in the parking lot at White Oak Golf Club there in Noonan, Georgia, down in beautiful Coweta County. Coweta County, home of the Coggin. Home of yep. scattered, and, smothered, and, covered, and, and Slice and dice. Yeah. Slice and dice. But however, you strangely, I pulled into the parking lot the other day. I was just going to hit some balls. And uh, I look in the car beside of me, and I said, Darren, you know how you see somebody and you say, I know him. Yeah. And this gentleman was sitting in his car eating a candy bar. And I got out, and, and lo and behold, he got out. I mean, if he would have stayed in his car and drove away, I would have never said anything to him. But the gentleman gets out, and I look at him. I said, Dave? And he goes, well, yeah, who are you? And I said, George Honeycutt. And he goes, oh, my gosh. I haven't seen this man in 20 years. Wow. 20 years. I, I'm impressed that George's memory is that good, Jeff. I mean, well, that's true. Good point. But... I, I met him and his wonderful wife, one of the best ladies walking on the face of this earth, Miss Kay Lynn. I met them back in my military days. Okay. And um, their their niece was married to my best bud, my best flying partner, and uh, uh, they've since gotten a divorce. I found out, and I it's, I haven't seen or heard from any of them in in minimum of fourteen years up to twenty years. And he, he literally was so excited about seeing, seeing me and, and catching up. He went, he drove back home to his house and got his wife and brought her, brought back, her back up, up to the club. That's and cool. I ended up calling She Who Must Be Obeyed. And, and we got together in the clubhouse one afternoon last week. And I mean, for, for an hour and a half, we caught up. And uh, how, how good was that? It, it's just, you know, it makes you just love the people that you get in your life and you become friends with. And, and uh, you know, they're like family. And, and it's amazing. We've gone for 20 years without speaking. So yeah, that is. And that's pretty impressive, too, that you actually remembered. I have to tell you, you know, the CRS may be going away. <laughs> no, it's not going away. <laughs> I took a pill that day. But uh, I want to do a shout out to Mr. Robert Collier, uh, of course. Robert is a really, really good young golfer, and he is the assistant golf professional at White Oak Golf Course there in Coweta County. And uh, Robert uh, cut me of a skin the other day in the skins game. So I told Robert I'd give him a shout-out for his little eagle that he got on number two on the old course at White Oak. 
So anytime you make an eagle, if you don't win a skin, I'd be looking for pencils with a race. Well, you know, where I was hitting driver three wood, three wood, five wood lob wedge, uh, Robert hit driver three iron and st evidently stuck it into about 12 feet and then made the per made the eagle putt to cut all the, all the quote-unquote birdies that everybody was thinking they were going to win money on, on number two. Mm -hmm. So he wins the eagle there. I think it was worth like 380 or something like that. So congratulations to Robert. But he's not new to this winning stuff, so he's, he's quite a young, uh, good player. So well, Congratulations to him. That's yeah, he's a, he's a nice guy. Works for Sean Renault. Sean, I've known for, goodness, 20 years plus. Sean was the head pro at Noonan Country Club, and then he went on to uh, other things at Arbor Springs. Uh, or as is as is referred to also as the Coweta Club, and uh, <laughs> we get we we give Coweta a lot of prop today. Mm. But uh, uh, and now Sean is the head golf professional at White Oak. So I want to thank those two for having me out over the weekend. We had a lot of fun at White Oak. Uh, a lot of my old buds are there. So it's always good to get back and see Tony and D Rabido and and uh, the group there, Double D and and of course we always end up having to run into Coggin and and uh, Ryan Jr. or Slice and Dice as Hugh and I call him. So, but it's good to get back and play. And the golf course there again, they've gone through a rough winter just like everybody else has, and it's now just starting to green up. But however, the greens themselves, uh, the Seminole side has Mini Verde. The old course side has Champions Bermuda, mm -hmm. so uh, they're thriving, they're doing well, and uh, the courses as a whole was in very good shape considering that they're just starting their growing season, yeah. so we had a lot of fun. Well, Hugh, let's do our Monday morning golf wrap here, and of course, uh, exciting, interesting weekend in the world of golf is in the professional ranks as a lot of our young players that are out there, professionals now, have either achieved their first win or have picked up their first win under the banner of the professional tour that they're under. And starting off, of course, is uh, a young man by the age of 22 years old ends up winning the Zurich Classic in New Orleans, and that's Sung, Sung Young No. And uh, No ends up winning at, um, uh, like I said, $1.224 million at 22 years old, uh, the young man just basically went out and with that little three-quarter swing of his, Hugh, he, he, he seems to have that little low check and, and uh, stop I shot. What, George, the kid's got some game. I mean, you look at him, he's got control of his golf swing and he controls his golf ball very well and that was obvious with the way the wind blew. Well, the wind blew yesterday really hard. Uh, a couple of times that you could even see the commentators out uh, walking the course with the players to where they were getting pushed back two or three steps with some of the gusts that were coming up, but uh, Shang Yun No is uh, he went out there yesterday and just made a statement. He had a brief hiccup uh, on 15 and 16, recording his first bogeys. Interestingly, in three and a half days, but he ends up holding off the field that was uh, making a charge at him. And uh, interestingly, some of the names that uh, did come down the pike, of course, uh, No ends up winning with a 71, shooting 269. That gave him again a check for 1.2. To four million dollars tied for second robert streb ends up shooting 70 at 271 finishing two shots behind that gets him five hundred ninety eight thousand dollars hugh that's a nice check for robert that'll be a, a, a good day for him get him a little closer to keeping his card and get himself to where he's got some stability out there that's for sure well another in uh, another character that uh found his way up to uh the top of the leaderboard was andrew savota and um uh, savota was uh basically you know, he, he, he's a journeyman, actually. He's been out on the tour for 11 yes. years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, Andrew found himself at the top of the leaderboard after an opening day 64. So that really made a statement. Again, uh, Sung Young No also shot 65 on day one. So that put both of them at the top of the leaderboard. But then Andrew comes back with a 68 on Friday, a 70 on Saturday, and a 69 on Sunday. A real strong tournament for him, and he just got a hold of a, a buzzsaw. I tell you what, so, though, look at look at down there just a couple more places that, who made a big move yesterday. We usually talk about him on Sunday going the opposite direction, but Robert Garrigus well, this going is, out and shooting 64 on Sunday. This is this is Robert's 30, statement year. 36 spots he right. moved up yesterday shooting 64. That is called 
jumping the leaderboard. And he really, really kind of shot himself in the foot, Hugh, on Thursday by shooting 73. I mean, that really put him back in the pack. There was concerns that he would not even make the cut. So, wow. again, he goes from a 73 on Thursday down to a 64 in that wind on Sunday, folks. That's a tremendous round of golf by Robert Garricus. And, again, Hugh, as I mentioned, this is this is kind of his year. Yeah. This is his statement year I mean, so you far. you go out and shoot 30 on the back nine, that's pretty stout. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's yeah. just that's just pure out golf in your balls so. in in that wind, and and it was windy for the morning t- uh, pairings, just like it was for the oh, yeah. afternoon I mean, pairings. They, when so. they were showing them warming up, you know, and they were showing no, you know, hitting some putts on the putting green. I mean, they could hardly that poor kid. He's he's so skinny, he could hardly stand there. Now tied tied with Robert in fifth place. Interestingly, since the haircut has seems to help tremendously. Charlie Hoffman has another good event. Ties finished for fifth. Two hundred and forty-eight thousand dollars for he and Robert and Eric Compton. Which I, you know, Eric Compton, seeing him up there, that's big. I mean, this is a young man that's had two heart transplants, and you know, he's overcome a lot in his lifetime. And, and by golly, it's time for him to catch a break. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, having both the transplants, uh, he's a walking miracle to begin no with. No question. In the fact that he can again. Go through the rehab after you have your chest cracked open once is hard enough, but having it cracked open twice and then having to come back from that and then still have the quality and the physical capability of being able to go out on the PGA Tour and keep up with these guys, that's that's pretty amazing. That's a walking miracle right just, there. And it just shows, you know, what it takes and, and how hard these guys work. You know, to get themselves out there and stay there. Well, again, making uh, somewhat of a third third day charge, Keegan Bradley was coming back up toward the leaders on the top of the leaderboard with a 65 on Saturday. However, again, as Keegan has demonstrated for the 2013-2014 wraparound season, he seems to have a problem finishing. And Hugh, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's nerves. I don't know if it's just focus. Uh, it's it's the but for all reasons, it just seems to skip by me why Keegan Bradley is going to go out and shoot a 75 on Sunday and, again, move himself literally from the top of the leaderboard back down to eighth place. Well, they can't use the excuse of, of him being fatigued, George, simply because the boy's working out like a maniac. Well, he so, is. You know, ma- obviously, again, he's supposed to be in great shape. But, you know, go, here's the, the, I think the story of the golf tournament, though, George, is David Duvall. Yeah. The man played the golf tournament with nine clubs. Yeah. Nine golf clubs. Why is PGA that? Tour. Why is that, Hugh? Because he just he wanted to be able to focus and, and make himself hit and get to the point to hit certain clubs for certain shots and not be, you know, bouncing around his bag, concentration. He's made a commitment from what uh, from what I read and heard. heard yeah, but I could him. look at the other side of the coin on that, Hugh, and say, here's a guy with continued mental issues. You know, if he, <laughs> you know what why doesn't he use the other five? I, I, you know, again, I so, can't, I'm not in his head. I can't answer that. But to go out and finish 25th and using nine golf clubs, it sounds like he's trying to get his golf okay, game Okay, so if he would have used all 14, would he have won? Very possible, but who knows? We'll you know, know. I, I agree. But you see my point. You, you understand. I, again, David has dealt with the ghost and the goblins and, and all the little voices inside of his head for years now. Uh, you know, I'm impressed that he's even out there. And secondly, he's a good guy. And so, thusly, you want him to, to secede. But, um, again, you know, whatever reason he decided to do that, I don't know. Another person I was glad to see up there at the, within the top ten, Hugh, was a uh, local boy to us in South Carolina, Tommy Ganey. Yep. It was good loves. to see Tommy. And uh, he finished tied for eighth with Keegan Bradley, picked up a check for 197 grand and some change. So uh, that was a check that Tommy definitely needed. Of course, uh, 197,000 after he uh, pays his taxes and gives uh, uh, Obamacare what uh, they desire, he'll end up with about 12 grand. So um, um, <laughs> congratulations to Tommy. And, I'm not uh, getting into politics. The, t- the 12,000 will uh, give him, you know, enough money to at least buy two more gloves. Well, so at least to get him to Charlotte this week, anyhow. Well, well, that's true, and uh, that's going to be a fun tournament. We're, I'm going to have a lot of fun covering that with you. Uh, that's one of the, I think, one of the better run events on the PGA Tour. Oh, there's no question. Wells Fargo, that that whole situation up there is just run like a major. Love the golf course. Yeah. Absolutely love the golf course. I've played the golf course twice and just absolutely love it. I and mean, We'll talk more about that later in the week. Again, tied for eighth, uh, Justin Rose again goes out. He's not shooting just 
really no low numbers, folks, but he's, again, he's there. He's there. 71, 67, 69, 68 for Justin Rose. Again, Justin is one of those brand names that you're going to have to keep an eye on, especially the way he flights his ball, the way he can put a lot of spin on it. If he gets the driver tuned down to where he's not going to have to deal with rough at Pinehurst, but again, He's one of those high flyers that, uh, you know, somewhere like a number two at Pinehurst could fit his bill. So It could. I mean, that golf course is, it's hard to predict, and it just you just don't ever know. It depends on, you know, how much rain, if it's firm, if it's, sl- if it's playing slow. We just got to see what the situation is when the, when the practice rounds start. Well, again, uh, Song Yu Know is um, making his first quote-unquote victory on the PGA Tour. He's 22 years old. The guy has got a swing that everybody loves to talk about, about how balanced he is. That seems to be the key word, Hugh, is balance. Mm -hmm. With with his swing, I think that balance and his control of the backswing and the abbreviated follow-through was uh, fitted the bill yesterday for the windy conditions down at in Alexandria, uh, and we're, we're talking about um, Avondale. I'm sorry, Avondale, Louisiana, at the Zurich Classic in New Orleans. So congratulations to No. Uh, again, he picks up 1.244 or 1.224 million of uh, the 6.8 million dollar purse, and now moves on to the Wells Fargo up at Charlotte. So that'll be a lot of fun. It should be absolutely. Let's jump next into a inaugural event, although it's been named something else in the past, this was the inaugural event of the Swinging Skirts Classic, LPGA Classic, and basically they're they're in Daly City, Daly City, California. Easy for you to say. That's basically. I, I was going to say you got some gum in your mouth. Yeah, or I'm, I'm working on it. It's, it's the over over indulgent saliva going this morning, but. Uh, they're out in basically San Francisco, and you could tell by the the apparel that the girls were wearing that it was cooled. And Friday afternoon, I was watching the coverage, and it was downright cold. Oh, yeah. It gets nippy It was upper no 40s, question. and yeah. the wind was blowing, and those girls were feeling it. So uh, the girls were out at the Swinging Skirts, the LPGA Classic, again, out at Daly City, California. And who comes in? I mean, what a great finish this was for this event, Hugh, in the fact you got Stacy Lewis, who is now leading the CME Globe, uh, you know, the race for the CME Globe Award, uh, third in the Rolex, and who is she going down the stretch with, playing tit for tat, is the 17-year-old phenom, Lydia Ko. Well, I'm going to tell you what, this young lady, I mean, you've been barking on this for about two or three months now, and I'm going to tell you what, she just proved you right, and I, yes, Jeff, I did say that, George was right, this girl has got some serious, serious game. She's got game, and you know, she's not the long, lengthy hitter like your Michelle Wees and some of the others on this tour, however, she knows how to play, the, she can dial in her irons with the best of them. I mean, she looks really like a 25 to 30 year old accomplished player out on that tour, the way she handled that golf course yesterday in those conditions. I mean, you know, you watch her hit those hybrids and stuff, I mean, it's just, they're landing like pitching wedges yeah exactly i agree uh she ends up she defeats uh by one stroke and and when i say folks they came down the stretch they look like two horses coming down the final (laughs) the final third of the racetrack here it was a lot of fun to watch Uh, really the, the the tournament took a big swing between 13 14 and 15 holes 13 14 and 15 because on 13 and 14 lydia ko birdies those holes however Stacy Lewis who was holding right in there with her ends up bogeying 14 so at that point there becomes a two-shot swing and then they go to the next hole the 15th and 16th hole and they both birdie 16 and then coming down 17 Lydia Ko pars 17 and then makes a birdie on 18 to end up winning by one Stacy Lewis definitely was doing what she needed to do Hugh uh, when you sit and look at her, the way she likewise played the holes, like 18, for example, she hit a modified fairway wood, a stinger out there, and just flew it. I mean, it had to go 250, 260. You know, you know. I agree. But you look, you know, you go look at the back nine, George. I mean, Lydia Bogey's number 10. You know, and then like you said, she birdied 13 and 14. She's got the two shot swing on 14, and then when Stacy birdied 16. 
and Stacy Birdie's 18, she just tops her on 18, and it's game over. Right, right. But again, Lydia Ko on 18, I mean, I think was the, really the shot of the tournament, You. She's sitting in the rough, and she's only about 60 yards away, but she's in the rough, really not able to put a lot of, impart a lot of spin on the ball when she's hitting her approach shot into 18. And this girl, just for however she did it, she ends up finding the absolute right groove on the club face mm -hmm. and ends up setting it in there about a foot and a half away from the cup. And then makes the putt and, and, you know, basically gives the old wave to the crowd. Look at me. I just won by one. And, uh, again, this is her third victory on the LPGA Tour. However, her first victory as an LPGA Tour member. So that's pretty neat, huh? So, but what difference does it make? It just means she won her third tournament. Well, but this now she's uh, she's an LPGA card-carrying member, Hugh. So this is her first victory as a member. That, uh, it so that means that Mickelson's it mean win in Tucson that one year didn't count. No, it counted ass. Okay, I just just you, you wanted to play this with me about the Duval thing. I'm just doing the same thing with you now. Game on. Okay. You started it this morning, but, not me. But it's been a week and a half. We're getting back in the groove here. So the, you know what's right. flying. Let's go. I should have I should have took my heart medicine this hey, morning. By the way, you see where my girl's getting her game back. She finished tied for 13. I and saw that. Would that. Be Miss I K Kim. I shooting. saw that. Shooting one under par for the tournament, and I tell you what, this girl gets it going for the U.S. Open. You better watch out. She, she's a player. There's no doubt about she it. She loves but, majors. But again, Lydia Ko, how good is this 17-year-old? I mean, again, she's picked up her third victory, and I'll give that to you, Hugh. It is her first as an LPGA member, folks, so just keep that in mind. But her third victory overall on the LPGA Tour, she shoots three under 69 yesterday to close off Stacy Lewis. And again, Stacy Lewis, another wonderful event for her. She just She's right up there at the top of the pinnacle right now for the LPGA oh, Tour. She's playing so. fantastic, solid golf. She just can't get through the door. As soon as she gets through the door... You know, it could be a different ball game. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But again, now she takes over the race for the CME Globe. She's number three in the Rolex rankings. So again, Lydia Ko is going to be number four, number four in the Rolex rankings. So again, these two, uh, I, I, this won't be the last confrontation in the battle down the stretch that they have uh, that's coming oh no. up this year. Oh no, there's going to be plenty more, and I think you're going to have more of Michelle Wee <laughs> and, and you know MB Park um, and some of the others. Oh, you want to go there? Do you want to go there? Well, look, the girl finished top 10 again this week, brother. Okay. All right. Did she not? Yeah, she did. All right, okay. Then. All right, again, this is the Monday Morning Golf Wrap being brought to you by the Myrtle Beach Golf Authority. Again, they're your number one source for memorable golf packages, vacations in the Myrtle Beach area. You can contact them at myrtle-beachgolf.com or 888-272-7263. And I want to thank the wonderful people at Myrtle Beach Golf Authority for bringing this to you. Again, the, the European Tour is at the Volvo China Open. And how many times are we going to go from Europe to China, from Europe, to Malaysia, from Europe, to Singapore. I mean, my God, these guys are booking some miles. I mean, they the frequent flyer miles have got to be going through their route. I mean, South Africa, over to there, back to South Africa, back over to there, back to Mexico, wherever the hell they are. It, it I get so confused at times. Well, and honestly, and I hate to sound this way, and, and you know, you can smack me if you want to. I'll smack Who you. Who cares? Who cares? I care. I mean, the European tour, they are spreading themselves so thin, Well, nobody's even watching it anymore because of the point. time it comes on television. That's a good point, but they are, they are basically traveling the globe looking for that corporate dollar. Oh, and, and they're finding they it. they got to have the sponsorship. The problem but, is they can't get the viewership because it's coming on at 3 well, in the morning. Well, of course, not everybody's up like you are. Well, that's true. Not everybody's... Uh, some of us like to sleep. Some of us sleep, yeah. I don't. But, again, uh, winning his first European tour event, Alexander Levy. Good for that young man. Yeah. He's 23 good. years old. Again, had a three-shot lead going into Sunday. That three-shot lead actually turned into a five-shot lead through the front nine. And then he finds himself in the middle of the, of the finishing nine, only one shot ahead. All of a sudden... He's got people work coming toward him, and he's going backwards. But uh, give it up that uh, this 23-year-old ends up shooting 69 on the last day. He ends up four shots clear of Tommy Fleetwood. So he picks up his first win in the Volvo China Open on the European Tour. And again, Hugh, I, I, I watch this stuff because, and I get involved, and I follow it 
because I know that we're going to see a lot of these young men in the Ryder Cup this year. And so I just, I want to see how they handle themselves under just every week, you know, stressful conditions. And again, I think because they do globe hop the way they do, that also helps them in the Ryder Cup environment. Oh, yeah, it bulletproofs them. I mean, you know, they're putting on their Kevlar and they're having to travel and go. So, I mean, you've got to be able to produce. Well, they're playing under different turf conditions each week. They're playing under different sand conditions each week, under different violent weather conditions each week. So, again, I think it calluses them. How do you like that? Calluses. I want to know where you pulled that one from. Yeah. How long did it take you to find that word on Google? Oh, it took a while. Does that start, start with a C or a K? I'm not sure, not but that's sure. pretty good. Come, pretty good comeback. But you're right. You know, but this does to deal build, with the different it, foods it, and all that. I that's mean, it's, right. It's, it's and, and I'll be honest with you too, George. You know, even though I said what I said, these guys, you know, after playing overseas for six years, you know, you become friends. I mean, these guys, they travel the world. And they actually are friends. Where you look at the PGA Tour, there's very few guys that are good friends on the PGA Tour. Right. And you brought this point up before, and I've agreed with you. And being friends is one thing, but I, I think, again, the, the camaraderie is, you know, we so much hear the Keegan Bradleys and the Phil Mickelsons, and we all know that Tiger's going to be on whatever team there is, even though he may not play an event before the Ryder Cup this year in September. But, again... You know, how much does that take you, really? Camaraderie, friendship. I mean, does that actually enable you to win the damn Ryder Cup? Well, it gives you some security knowing you've got your buddies there and somebody that if something's going wrong or what. I'm just saying, it's more, It's like if you're playing on an NBA team or an, an NFL team, you know you've got people you can rely on and that you have practiced and played with pretty much every day. And that's kind of what I'm getting to. These guys are around each other all the time. Here in the United States, Guys will play two weeks, but and in then the individual gone. events, Hugh, they're independent contractors. They're not on a team. Right. They're out for themselves. Okay, get the gun, get the gun. Seriously, yeah, they are independent contractors. But on the Ryder Cup, they are team members. Are they not? They are. They so are. So what is your what is your stupid point right now? <laughs> Seriously. So you're saying that in the off hours, in the practice rounds, and the travel back and forth each week. They're all going to dinner together. They're, they're going, hanging uh, out. They, they okay. know each other. Okay. They know tendencies. They know their families. They exactly. Know their, they know their, so their strengths get... and their weaknesses. Yeah. Where the guys on the PGA Tour couldn't care less. They could give a rat's ass whether one person was there or not. Interesting. Except for Tiger. Yeah, and the fact is they're talking he's going to try to play in the British Open, and the guy, if he was smart, would take the rest of the year off and get himself healthy and figure out how to stay healthy and get ready for next year. Because they're probably going to end up wanting put If he's not careful, he could put himself in a wheelchair. Yeah. You think it's that bad? I think it could be. Do you think it's that it's bad? It's not that bad right now, George, but it could be. Really? Yes. Okay, my opinion of this, if he was to fire Sean Foley and to quit trying to be Mr. Olympia in his muscle building workouts and get back a little bit to, you know, just getting some soft tissue back into his body and being able to swing the way he used to swing. Like an athlete instead of a robot, yes, you are 100% correct. Then his longevity would increase by two to three fold. Uh, and the wins of the majors or wins in general and lack of injury would Where, go away. Tiger has gotten into the robot, and I can't believe we have turned this to a Tiger discussion, but, you know, Jeff opened up this damn window. So the point is, is I, I agree with you 1,000%. He's turned into a freaking robot. If he would learn to play with his freaking hands Mark again. Mark it down. If he would learn to play with his hands again in his mind, he had the best mind-to-hand communication link that's been seen in this game well, of golf. one of the greatest hit, but they talk about Mickelson and his imagination. Tiger no. had, it, had it just as good or better. And Tiger had it when he was 12. You know, the point is, is doggone it, he's the best that's played this game. He's the best that's ever played this game. I think, if you if you sit now, I'm not, that's not taking anything away from Mr. Nicholas, Mr. Palmer, the rest of them, the Hogans, the Sneeds, all the others through the, our, our, the legends of this game. But doggone it, there was nobody better 
with the mind to the hands and being able to do things. I mean, you still have players today, and I'm talking about legendary players that state that Tiger Woods has done more with the golf club and done things with the golf club that they never thought could occur. Oh, absolutely. You're not, you're not expressing any kind of new thought or process. Everybody knows that. But here's the thing that I want to say to you to agree with you 100% with what you're talking about with Tiger. Okay? You think about Ben Hogan pre-car accident. Yeah. The man could hardly bust a grape. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, he won a couple of tournaments and whatnot, but he was not the dominant legendary player that he That's true. became That's true. until after the wreck. Why do you think so? Because I'm going to tell you what the Hogan secret is. Okay. Everybody talks about the shaft angle and how he did this. and You look at the fact of before the wreck and after the wreck. After the wreck, he broke both his legs, shattered his legs, and the whole nine yards. No stamina, no anything. His backswing, his golf swing changed because of the inability for his legs to move, the flexibility of them. That created a more stable base allowed him to turn and create what everybody talked about was that secret place at impact. Right. It's all a result of his legs. But the man, where I'm going with this, is the man changed his golf game according to his injury. Okay. And became one of the greatest players of all time that people still talk about and try to emulate. So is Tiger going to change his game because of well, his back that's, surgery? That's the question. But why didn't Tiger do that when he, when he blew out his knee? knee? Good question. Why didn't Tiger do that when he hurt his wrist? Why didn't Tiger do that when he hurt his shoulder? Why didn't Tiger do that when he hurt his ankle? The, the thing is, is he's hooked up with this quote-unquote instructor who hadn't done a damn thing in this game ever. And all of a sudden, he's the swing guru. And we've now seen many other players leave him and go to others, back mm -hmm. to others. Mm -hmm. But, uh, again, Tiger, Tiger could have been his own coach and really, I think, would have already seceded Jack in majors. And by him moving from – he sh first off, by going reaching out to Butch, he reached out to the best, the best there was, not because I think so, but – Butch basically took what Tiger had and just tried to help him stay within that. And one of the nicest men you'll ever meet in Butch Harmon. Well, but Butch wasn't changing Tiger. Hank changed Tiger, mm -hmm. and then Sean Foley changed Tiger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And whether Tiger believes in his mind that these changes were necessary, you can't show me any proof that it was. And you can't show me any proof that it was successful. Yeah, he won three times last year. Who cares? If Tiger was definitely physically and mentally charged up in 100%, hell, he'd win 12 events. I mean, nobody could touch him. He's lost his putting stroke. He's lost his driver. He he absolutely can't hit a driver because well, he's he never wants hit to a do driver. This. He's never hit a driver on the planet anyway because he goes at it too darn hard at times. Okay, but, but the putter, yes, I agree with you hundred percent. I mean, how many times do you have to miss three footers to realize you need to go back to your old putter? Here's a man, Hugh, who went five years and didn't miss a putt from five feet and in. Did not miss a putt for five years. Especially when it's proven, it's in the record books, it's in the stats. Did not miss a putt in five years of five foot or less. And you you're going gonna to allow a company to tell you you have to change putters, dude? Parts? You know, you know. I don't know. Is it is it eight hundred million dollars? Pretty much says I can do whatever the hell I want to, and I don't care what anybody thinks. Or did Tiger truly believe in his mind that? Okay, if I bulk up and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I can I go I'm gonna be the best that's ever played this game. You know, I've I've sat and watched this downturn and and tell me if you agree with this or not. And Jeff, I apologize. We're we're running long here. Okay. Look at the downturn in Tiger's personal life and his career. Mm -hmm. When did it start? When Daddy died. Yeah, because he had nobody running his life. When when his father died, that's when the shit with Ellen started. That's when all of this quote unquote physical problem started. That's when oh I need to change from this person to this person to this person. It all started when Earl died. Yeah. I mean Earl and, ran his life. And Earl ran his life, that's right. He had that that you you've seen it. You've been there personally. You know. 
And the point is, whether it's good or bad, I'm not saying it's either or. I'm just stating that if you look back historically, at the at the life changing moment was when Earl passed away. Earl passed away, and Tiger got a chance to kind of be a kid, which he never did have a chance growing up. Okay. So he went nuts, and everybody wants to blame it, whatever, immaturity, whatnot. The kid never had a chance to learn from mistakes like the rest of us had. Well, that's true. I'm just saying, when your father's telling you when you eat, sleep, and go to the bathroom and take a shower, go to bed, you know, all that, you, you know, the guy hardly ever went on a date. Yeah, I agree. And if he did, I, it was no, supervised. I, yeah, I so agree. So when his dad died and he had a chance to go home. I mean, when wild, you're on Johnny Carson at the age of three, you know, things things change. Yeah, and, and it never changed after that. I mean, he just, it was always regimented and he's always doing this, this, and this. So when his dad died, unfortunately, you know, you lose a parent, it's tough. But it's one of those things, he all of a sudden now, I got freedom. He went nuts. Well, he went nuts. Okay. But again, let's go back to his golf game. Does he feel like, and, and we'll, we'll put a stop to this, folks. I'm, we're rambling on, and I'm sorry we're boring you. Hopefully we're not boring you with this. But, you know, this is a conversation that Hugh and I have had off camera quite a many times. And it's just, it's gotten to the point with Tiger, he has the capability of becoming the best, greatest, no question about it, in the record books, of everybody's opinion of all time. And I fully believe, I mean, the guy's 38 years old now. He's, he's reached the pinnacle of his playing career. He has reached it. It's, it's not, he's at the top. He's already on the downhill. Oh, yeah. No question about it. And realistically, with this now back injuries, the leg injuries, the shoulder injuries, we all have injuries. Hell, I, I can't get out of bed in the morning. You got more ailments than Carter got liver pills. That's right. That's right. But... Here he is. He's probably one of the finest tuned athletes in this world. He has kept himself up as a fine tuned athlete for this many years. I think he's gotten some bad advice, both in a physical aspect and in the mental aspect, especially with the golf swing. And until he goes back, and I think he needs to step back some, some years. I think he needs to go back and just step back and go, okay, let's get back to the game where I had fun doing it. I can play at 60% and beat the entire fields out here, and I just need to get in love back with my flat stick again, and then boom, he's there. And does he play the British this year? I think so. I Hell, I think he'll show up at Pinehurst, but I'm not, I'm not going to step out there. He won't be ready there. for Pinehurst. But let's say he doesn't. But again, I think that's a target date for him. Oh, it's probably a target date, and he's probably got them set there, and he's trying to reach those and get the okays from the doctors and the physical therapists. But I think, you know, he has put it out there that his, uh, you know, his ultimate goal is the Open Championship. Okay. And, and the Open's in August. Yeah. So, again, I think that's great. I think that's a super timeline, and that gets him back to the Open. That's fantastic. He comes back. He plays the PGA, and then he's in the Ryder Cup. And because you know, Mr. Watson's going to put him in the Ryder Cup. Oh, you need if he's somewhat healthy and can. Oh, he's got. Great, if he's got to shove a broomstick up his ass yeah. to play. Yeah. He's going to be in the Ryder Cup. Yeah. I so agree. I agree with you. Well, I'm sorry I got you off on this, and but it was good. So uh, we needed to have that conversation. I want to thank everyone for joining us here on the Monday Morning Golf Wrap. Of course, brought to you by the Myrtle Beach Golf Authority. For my good friend Hugh Roy the Third, I'm George Honeycutt, and as always, the TGD programming is now available on demand at TGD TV. Get your golf news or whatever else you want to find, including packaging here at thegolfdirector.com. So again, for Hugh Roy the Third, George Honeycutt, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you real soon.